Hi, I'm Dr. Gary Volkel from MedStar Health. As Director of Movement Disorders at MedStar Franklin Square Medical Center, I'm proud to be part of a team that offers some of the most advanced and innovative therapies for patients. Common conditions that I treat include Parkinson's disease, tremor, dystonia, as well as other conditions which may be less common, including ataxia and Huntington's disease, and then things that are sort of in the middle, like restless leg syndrome, periodic limb movement of sleep, things of that nature. Movement disorders can affect people in all different ways, typically can affect somebody's quality of life such that they're not able to do the things that they used to be able to do easily, things that they enjoy doing like hobbies or things that they need to do like taking care of themselves or taking care of somebody who they love. One of the main conditions I take care of are people with Parkinson's disease. So that condition has been around for a long time and the treatments have been getting better over, over the years. Uh, when we started, we only had limited medications which could help treat symptoms. Now it's advanced further. We have significantly more medicines that we're able to use to help improve quality of life as well as even surgical options, including deep brain stimulation, for example, which is a type of neurosurgery or brain surgery. Parkinsonism is a description of somebody's symptoms. It's not a diagnosis. There are many things that can cause Parkinsonism but the four main aspects of Parkinsonism are what we call bradykinesia, which is a slowness of movement, rigidity or a feeling of stiffness, stiffness of some of the muscles, tremor, which is shakiness of a body part, and gait or postural instability, so a change in the way that somebody walks, including shuffling or maybe falling more frequently. Deep brain stimulation is one of the therapies that's now available for patients with different movement disorders, including Parkinson's disease. It involves multiple teams coming together, including the patient and their family, to collaborate and discuss if this is a good option. Ultimately, what would happen if somebody does get the procedure would involve placement of a very small or thin metal wire, which we call an electrode, goes into a specific part of the brain, and then is eventually attached to something like a battery pack, which goes in the chest kind of like a pacemaker. And this is something that I would be able to help the patient to control, and the patient would have some control over this as well, to make sure that a certain amount of stimulation is going to the part of the brain that we want it to go to. And that can help reduce those symptoms and make people have a better quality of life. My interest in neurology comes from the fact that the brain and the nervous system is easily the most fascinating part of what makes us us. So I knew that I just had to, had to help people with problems with their nervous system. There's no other field where you get to really work with people, become a part of their family, take care of people throughout their whole lives with some of the conditions that I take care of and just be a part of them and helping them along throughout the rest of their lives. It's incredible.